Hello, welcome to my channel and if you've watched my videos before, welcome back. Holly to me meant Christmas. We'd go out and we'd uh, pull it from the hedgerows and bring it back and stuff it over pictures on the walls, over doorways, anywhere we thought a bit of holly might liven things up. Our Christmases were always very green. We had natural trees which um, we got because they were always hung around the butcher's door I think and the greengrocers too in England back in the 1950s I'm talking about so long ago and um, so you'd buy your tree and lug it home and you'd plant it in a bucket and um, it was quite a business really and then you'd decorate the bucket you'd throw a cloth over it or put crepe paper around it and that would be your Christmas tree and um, then you'd have your holly. I should also say that I've never found holly that easy to paint. It's very glossy, it has a lot of reflection, it's almost glassy in reflection and um, I don't think this is the most wonderful holly picture but I think I've captured its spiky prickliness and the lusciousness of its berries, which I think are poisonous. I'm not sure about that. I think the birds eat them, but I wouldn't personally attempt to eat a holly berry. Some of the leaves are not all they should be, so ignore those ones. Just pick out the best ones and copy those. So I used my usual palette of titanium white, primary yellow, raw, sienna raw, umber, French ultramarine, blue, sap green, and alizarin crimson. And I dropped a pile of paint brushes below my easel and I'm starting off with a bristle round and some blue and titanium white that's French ultramarine blue titanium white with a touch of raw umber to make a grey. It's a very bluish grey but I just wanted a sort of somewhat dark and neutral background. I applied the paint with a rough crisscross action and I'll use a powder brush afterward to um, soften it and to smooth, well not smooth it out, but just to soften and blend it a little better. I should say too that I'm using quite a lot of water on my brush to spread this paint around. Um, it just makes it that much easier and gives you good coverage. I'm going to use a regular powder brush which I get from the dollar store in the makeup area and they're lovely big and soft and cheap I think I paid a dollar for mine I think they're a dollar 25 now but um, I use the crisscross motion again to um, blend this and I don't blend it very thoroughly but just to sort of soften it out from the brush strokes so that um, you get a sort of wintry cloudy look that's what I'm aiming for I'm using a liner brush and raw sienna and I'm going to paint in my holly stem As I always do, I start off my painting with a mid-tone colour to which I add highlight and shadow later on in the game and um, I've picked a sort of mid-green, holly green, not too dark and um, I'm going to try and put in those spiky points. It doesn't look too much like a holly leaf at the moment but I'll work on it. Um, holly is not my best subject I've got to admit. Um, but it didn't turn out too badly, I thought. I thought it was, you know, okay to show you. But I think if with practice I could possibly do better, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. 
I should also tell you I'm using a small round for this. I think I would have done better with a quarter inch or half inch flat. But we'll see how it goes. I put the berries in with alizarin liz crimson and a small round and I think I should have chosen a brighter red um, and I'll tell you why. If I had put a brighter red I could have used the alizarin crimson as a shadow colour on it which I eventually did do um, but I started off with this alizarin and I think it was the wrong colour. Go with um, a brighter opaque red and I'm sorry if you can hear the dogs barking in the background there's just no stopping them at the moment well here's where I take another crack at the holly leaves with a half inch flat and I think it's a better brush all around for holly and I should have started off with that, but I didn't. And there's nothing in painting that you can't correct. Don't be intimidated by having put something down that you're not happy with, because at the very worst, you can take some gesso and paint out if you're using acrylics, as I am. And even with oils, you can wipe it off and start over. There's nothing in painting world that is irrevocable irrevocably finished or done or cast in stone however you want to put it it's all easily um, fixed I don't think I had the right um, curve on the pointy bits and I go over it at the end with a liner brush and accentuate those prickly points even more And the other thing is, don't worry about adding things to your painting or taking things out if you feel you've got too much. Here, I'm adding more leaves because I thought it looked a little sparse, to tell you the truth. And um, I could just as easily have taken out leaves if I thought I had too many. Um, I advise keeping a pot of gesso around because it gives you, you can paint that on and it comes in different colours too, but you can paint that over anything you don't like and it gives you a fresh surface to redo it or not as you wish. That's how I correct my paintings anyway. So I've got my mid-tones on and I have decided that the light is coming from the right and so everything on the right hand side will have a highlight on it and everything on the left hand side of the painting will have a shadow and um, this is the point that I usually make that decision where the light is coming from. I paint everything with a mid-tone, it's very flat looking. Um, no definition and then I decide okay where's the light coming from where will my highlights be where will my shadows be and I usually put my shadows on first I don't know why you could do you could go either way with that really it's just how I paint and in this case I'm using French ultramarine blue for my shadow and I'm just putting it on the um, holly leaves I think they're called leaves or is it brax I'm not sure about holly um, I just put it on where I think there will be no light where it won't be caught by the high by the light where it will be in shade
I've just always found it easier to paint this way to get my mid-tone on and then decide on the light, then put in my shadows and highlights. And I'm sure other artists do it differently in their own way. Um, but it is a good solid way of getting definition in the painting, getting a feeling of solidity in whatever you're painting. And um, I usually use those three tonal values. And sometimes I get exciting and put in other colors. Um, for instance, I'll use alizarin crimson on my stems as well as sometimes French ultramarine blue or raw umber. Um, there are a lot of Taylor colors that always add a little punch to a painting. You have to experiment with colors and see what makes the painting yours. It's those choices that give your painting that signature look. So you can say, oh yeah, that's a Carolyn's art. She always chooses those colors. She always does her stems this way. I can tell that this is one of her paintings. And um, that's how I think paintings become your own, is by your color choices. Or at the very least, it's one of the ways that you can make a painting your own. So I'm thinking of this as um, a branch of holly pulled from the holly hedge. Very higgledy-piggledy and not very nicely done. Just a rough shrub holly. I'm trying to make those points look sharp and prickly and um, give it the feeling of holly. Holly is a very prickly plant and uh, you always got a few scratches when you were picking holly. It was another thing that you'd see around the door of the green grocers um, in England back in the 50s. They would decorate it with pine and holly and mistletoe and um, oranges, anything they could just put round the door in a giant sort of wreath, well not wreath, swag I suppose, and it just made Christmas for me. It'd always be very crisp, very cold, very windy, no snow, not where I lived um, on the east coast, and um, but always windy and icy cold. And seeing the green grocery um, place and the which is decorated with rabbits and pheasants and things they would hang around the door, as well as the Christmas trees propped up against the windows. That's what made Christmas for me, because in my Christmas shopping. And my favorite place to shop was Boots the Chemist because it smelled so delicious, very scented. You can be a bit sketchy with the veins. Not every part of every vein has to show. Um, I, I guess my brush is a little bit on the dry side, but it really doesn't matter. You don't need to show every single part. You're just sort of suggesting the veins. I think it's looking quite prickly and holly-like, but I do use my uh, liner brush just to um, refine the edges.
For my highlight, I added primary yellow and titanium white to my general pool of green. And um, that's how I paint too. I keep a pool of color in the middle and add to it. Unless it's something very different. Like if I have my blues and greens in the middle, then I'll make a different pool of green, a uh, pool of color for my reds and oranges. That's probably pretty obvious, but I know some people keep their palette very, very separated in colors, and I don't. I added pyrrole red to my palette. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's how I pronounce it, anyway. And that is very opaque and gives me a lovely bright color for the holly berries. And I'll use the alizarin crimson as the shadow on that. And I think I mix it with a little raw umber, which is also a very nice neutral for shadows. I love both alizarin crimson and raw umber because when you, they are very transparent. And when you go over another color, it just adds depth because that color still shows through to a degree and it gives another layer of depth uh, to whatever you're painting. Stems, berries, leaves, whatever. There's a little pink in the white that I'm going to use for a highlight, and that's okay. I don't need a stark white, and I think it um, still works, even with the pink in there. Makes the berries look delicious. So I'm quite happy with that. There may not be the best shaped holly, but I think it looks very prickly and very holly-like. I think it's captured the wildness of holly, and um, this is definitely hedgerow holly. And um, yeah, I'm kind of pleased with it overall. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. That helps my channel, channel grow. And if you've already done that, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It helps me a lot. And um, so I'm not sure what I'll be painting next. I'm going away to spend Christmas in England. So I'll be gone for three weeks. I guess I've got at least two weeks that I can paint something. But I haven't thought about it much. So um, I'll put my thinking cap on and I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.